Greetings to you all, Sega Omega here, bringing you my next Let's Play. This time we're going to be going through Command and Conquer. That's the original game, CNC 95, Tiberium Dawn, whatever you want to call it. This is the one that kicked off the series. Now, as with most of the games I seem to be Let's Playing, this one does have an introduction. Uh, this isn't it, it's just a nice little loading menu. But I'm not going to bother playing through the introduction because it's excessively long and we learn nothing. You can watch it if you want to, but we're just going to jump straight into a new game. Now, if you learn anything from the introduction video, it's that there are two factions. Well, I say factions, two armies, if you like, which are just fighting one another near enough for control of the world. The Global Defense in this Initiative, you can think of that as the People's Army, and the Brotherhood of Nod, the quasi-terrorist group. Main thing we're fighting over, well that's that's Tiberium, it's a mineral, it grows in the ground, and it is basically now the world's currency. It's what everyone wants, it's what these two are mostly just fighting over. We we'll go in a bit more depth than that later on, but that will do for now. Anyway, two campaigns to play through. Question of where to start. Now unlike most modern games, where you play through one campaign and then the next, the way CNC works is it likes you to play through them both at the same time. The stories progress at the same rate and the storylines overlap. So to understand what's going on, you have to play them both. So that's what we're going to do. Global Defense Initiatives. We might not swap over every single mission, but I, I certainly won't go more than two missions with one side before playing the, the, those two missions with the others. Are you picking this up? Good. I know you need more deep background, but we're up against it. I'll try not to talk too much in the introductions. Nod forces have fortified this beachhead at X-16Y-42. Intelligence is still coming in, so we can't tell you a lot. But we found a chink in their armor. Commander Carter can sneak you and some backup forces on shore right here. You may get some artillery support from his gunboats, but this is mostly grunt work. Your mission is simple. Knock out all fortifications. Eliminate all Nod troops. And establish a beachhead by building your base. Good luck. It's very nice to see some uh, full motion videos in the introductions. I mean, very few games do that. Even now, you don't get it very often with any other series other than the Commander Conquer series. But back in the day, back in '95, that was huge. It's still a, it's still a pleasant touch. New construction options. Now, doing things without explaining. That bit you just saw me deploy was the mobile construction vehicle. The idea is you drive that to a nice location and then it unpacks into this construction yard with which you can build your base. It's a real-time strategy game, it's much the same as any other you've got. We have to establish a base, we have to power the base, we have unit production structures, we have an economy to manage. This here is the first level, so this isn't a tutorial, I say, because it, it doesn't work you through, it doesn't give you little mission objectives like, oh, first, first objective, build a power plant. It just sort of assumes you know what you're doing. And I'm not going to explain every step of everything I do. Because I'll be building a base in most levels, so... Over the course of every level, I'm sure I'll explain it, but... but I'm not going to explain it all now, we're all getting incredibly bored. But yes, this level is not a tutorial. But it, it does work very slowly and it is exceptionally easy. They give you so many reinforcements, you'll notice, that even if you couldn't figure out quite how to deploy the MCV, you'll probably still complete the level. Which is good, nobody wants to pick up a game that doesn't explain how you play and then it's incredibly difficult first mission. You notice I'm not, I'm not pushing out too much yet. I like to build up a bit of a force before I, before I attack. There's another reason for this. These turrets over here. Uh, the boat can take them out. can take them out quite comfortably. And we can't complete the level unless these things are dead. So I'm just sort of letting the boat do it. We can't control the boat. He just patrols back and forth and shoots at whatever he sees. Now up here we have our credits. I believe they're called credits in this game. And for this base, we have no means of gaining more credits. So I have 700 left, minigun is 100. Take a guess at what I'm going to buy. You notice that some of the creature comforts from more modern real time strategies isn't here. 
For example, I can't see the health bars of, of the units. I have to click on them to see their health. It's okay on my units, because I'll, I'll be taking big drag boxes, so I'll be able to see them all. But looking at things like that turret, I can't actually see its health. I have to physically click on it to have a look at how damaged it is. I'm in this situation again where I have slowdown and I have no idea if the recording software is picking it up. But if it is, I can explain why it is. I am playing this from an original CD, and whenever the music track changes, the computer has a bit of a hissy fit. Maybe that's because it's too old. I honestly can't remember if back in the day, back on old Windows 95, the same thing happened. It may have. But it just doesn't like changing track. But I'm not disabling the music. Too much nostalgia. Anyway, the army's sufficiently big. Let's go hunting. I don't think one of the one of GDI's finest commanders, i.e. us, was really needed for this mission. Ooh, a nod buggy. I haven't mentioned much about the units. Minigunners are your basic infantry, not have minigunners as well. GDI get Humvees. We all know what a Humvee is, right? Nod get nod buggies, which is essentially a Humvee. They may be a slight different in cost. Uh, obviously we can't build them yet, but later on we will be able to. Nice thing about this level, if you remember from the introduction video, we were very proud of ourselves because we'd found a chink in the enemy's armour, which happened to be a part of the beach where they seemingly forgot to build any turrets. It's bad planning on Nod's part, but it doesn't really matter, because we sent in one boat ahead of us and it was able to wipe all of the turrets off the beachfront. So even if this place had had a couple more turrets, the boat still would have completely destroyed everything and cleared us apart. Yes, sir. Now our job is really more of a, of a hunt down here. The enemy, they have no base on this level, they have a few units, they send them forward very slowly. As I said, it's level 1, they want to introduce you to the game nice and easy. We're reinforced with 10 times the units they even have on the level. So unless you just suicide everything into those turrets, you're not going to be losing. We can just sit and wait, they will all come to us eventually, but I'd rather go hunting. Get this level out of the way, because there's not much to see here. Get on to some of the slightly better levels, a bit more action. Fog of War, much to say in any other game. Get your units near, starts to unveil itself. There is no re-shrouding in this game. Once you've uncovered something, it stays. You have perfect vision for the rest of the level. You notice this map is tiny. There's very little to find here. And the mission will end when we've killed everyone, so that means there is there is someone about. I can hear a Humvee shooting. Here he is. Uh, there's somebody else. All right. Mission no, no, there's not. It's just a bit delayed. Every time you do a level, you get a ending clip. I think they're predefined for every scenario. If they are, this was a terrible choice because, well, I don't remember us fighting in any terrain that looked like this. But whatever. The main pull of this ending scenario seems to be the the birth of a new base, which constructed a grand total of one barracks and about five troops. As like I said, I easily could have just walked over that level with the units, but if they're going to give me an MCV, then yes, I'm going to build some buildings, even if they serve no purpose whatsoever. Efficiency 10%. Uh, efficiency, I believe, is down to how well you do given the amount of money you spend. So, because I've got so little money left, my efficiency is way down. And leadership, I think, is your casualties uh, compared to the enemy's casualties. I believe that's how it works. If it's wrong, please correct me, because I never look too much into the mechanics. Because I don't, I don't give a damn about my score. That's why. Let's 
There's no point in hunting for high scores on the early levels because your later levels will completely outstrip them. Point wise. Here's a nice feature I like. At the end of every level you'll see progression. So if we successfully win a mission, then we get to sort of see on a world on a world scale the effect we had. So we took that little beachfront that was up here, and we've secured this landing area, and our next kind of attack is to just take the entire region. So we'll push on with that. And I said region, apparently I meant Estonia. My geography is not enough for me to reliably say what these countries are. So if I take a guess, I'll get it wrong. Then I'll look like a fool. Good job with the beachhead, Commander. It's time to bring you up to speed on Nod so you know what you're dealing with. This is Kane, the self-appointed leader of the Brotherhood of Nod. So serious. Stand by, I'll link us up. Mission critical. Know why not have this beach bottled up? They're protecting a big Tiberium refinery that intelligence somehow missed. We need backup now. Not troops are pouring out of their base, strangling our foothold. We gotta knock out that refinery, eliminate all nine forces before we lose our position. I don't know how long we can hold out. Damn. You heard the man. What are you waiting for? Some of the finest acting you'll ever see going up in Commander Conquer here. So the enemy, they have a a refinery that apparently we are terrified of. The refinery is a very basic structure. It is the it is the economy of the game. Repairing, I just did absentmindedly there. Uh, it just restores building hit points. Obviously you can't repair vehicles with the repair icon. We can repair vehicles with a structure later on, but let's not talk about that. Reinforcements have arrived. And it will it'll bump itself back up at a cost of resources. Engineers, with the game nicely provided with right here, can fully... You know, the guns. Okay, that's a different game. Ignore what I say. Okay, one thing I'm pretty sure engineers can do is capture enemy buildings. It will take one engineer to capture a building, and unlike some of the sequels, you don't need to damage the building first. So if you can get an engineer up close, you can just walk straight in and take it. I'm holding out here because I did know this was coming. A new MCV. Now if you notice, and I'll be honest, back in the day when I played this, I didn't notice. This is the same base as before. It's the same beach, it's the same weird line up of bunkers over here that serves no purpose. So apparently we got we got quite badly attacked after we secured this area. We lost our construction yard, everything but our barracks. If you're thinking this is stupid because that map is tiny, what are we doing on this tiny map again? Well, the battlefield's going to expand, there's going to be more for us to explore this time. Construction complete. New construction options. As far as construction goes, we're a bit limited again. Alright, okay, let's go explore. I hope I've run to the same beach. Looking at it now, the terrain looks slightly different, so maybe it's not. Anyway, we found some enemies up here. Um, seem to, we seem to be outnumbered slightly. But that's a problem we'll have to overcome in the next video. So I'm going to cut the video off here. I'll click the pause menu. See, just so you guys don't miss anything. I'm going to be cutting the video off. Hopefully, I'll see you next time.